Hey, in today's video, uh, let's just do a fun uh, little exercise. So um, I am here on Mixamo.com. And as you know, this is Adobe's uh, motion capture um, resource, right? So you can grab a character, you can click on characters, you can grab animations. And just for fun, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna grab a fun character and see if I can bring him into uh, Maya and just get him maybe walking around a specific path, just literally just as a fun uh, exercise. So in my case, what I did was I went to page one of the characters uh, tab here and I just clicked on this uh, cool looking monk uh, character. So let me just uh, refresh it, see if I can rotate him around. So I think he is a really cool character and I would love to see him in uh, Maya. So next what I'm gonna do is let's uh, maybe assign some animation for him and in my case, I'm just going to do something simple like walking. And uh, let's see which one of these kind of makes sense. Here's a, just a basic walk, I suppose. So I'm going to, um, I'm looking at this one or this one. They look exactly the same to me, but I'm just going to click on it and see. I'm going to say walk in place. And uh, let's see, do we need to adjust his arm space? This is arms in, this is arms out. I kind of like him out a little more, so he's kind of a, kind of a stronger silhouette. Or I mean, stronger kind of pose, right? I don't need to trim anything in overdrive. I like his speed. I don't think I need him uh, slower or faster. So. Let's go ahead and just grab this. I'm going to grab the, I'm going to say download. And in my case, because I'm going to go to uh, Maya with this, I'm going to uh, select the FBX frame per second. I do want 30 frames and I do want skin and I don't want any key reduction. So I'm just going to say download. All right. So once it downloads, let go, let's go ahead and drop, jump into uh, Maya. All right, here I'm in Maya, I'm gonna say file import. Then I'm just gonna say uh, import the FBX file that I just downloaded. So you can see on the bottom left, it's importing and initializing. All right, so this is what I get. When I uh, simply import the character, this is uh, what I'm seeing. I'm gonna turn on my textures and maybe press play. And there he is. He's just walking in uh, in Maya. And maybe uh, let's right click on his materials and see why he's kind of a little bit dark. Um, I'm going to turn this ambient color up. I don't really want him to be uh, this dark and I don't really have any lights set up. So as you can see in my outliner, I have zero lights and my lights are not of a none. So I'm just using default uh, lighting, right? And Maybe this is a little too much, so maybe I'll go to like 70%. And now since I'm looking also in the uh, material uh, attribute, I could see that the color was brought in. I can see that the bump map was brought in. Uh, there is also some other maps, specular maps, uh, all in here. And it's just using these kind of a standard foam material, right? So obviously this wouldn't work with Arnold because then we would have to switch it to AI um, standard surface, but for this exercise, I'm not looking to do any beautiful renders. I just simply want to play around with some of the animation. All right, so uh, if you wanted to see the skeleton, you can always click on this button here and you can see the skeleton in action, right? So if I press play, you can see the rig and see how that's looking. It looks really cool. All right, great. So now uh, let's go ahead and give him a path that he can follow and maybe uh, walk around. So right now, obviously, he's just simply walking in place as a 31 uh, frames, um, 31 keyframe animation, right? And we can select the skeleton. We can see that every single one of these keys um, has been baked into the joints, right? We could see that here. Uh, all right, so what I would like to do is let's uh, just for fun. I'm gonna go to curves 
and let's use this uh, EP curve tool. And I'm just going to create maybe a um, some kind of path that he could follow. So initially, I'm not going to worry about making it perfect. I just want to give myself some points. And now what I can do once I have some points, I can go to um, edit point, right? And we can actually move them around. So let's uh, create like an, a fun little path that maybe he can turn a little bit and he can follow the path. All right, so I don't know if I'm happy with this, but I think it will work for um, for this exercise. All right, cool. So next, let's go ahead and put this guy onto our path. So how would, how do we do that? Right now we have the mesh and we have the uh, rig, and now we also have a curve. All right, so the next step is going to be uh, adding a locator that can follow the path. So to do that, I'm gonna go to create and I need to make sure that uh, it doesn't really matter what tab I'm in, modeling, ring air animation, they all have access to create. So go to create and click on locator. As soon as you click on it, you can see it showed up in your outliner. If you select it and press F, you can see what that uh, looks like. It's just a little gizmo in the middle of the world, right? And what I would like to do is I'm going to uh, grab my skeleton and I'm going to middle drag it into the locator, just like that. And now if you um, click on the locator, you could see that the joints are also being selected, right? So now what we could do is we can select the locator, uh, hold on the shift key, select our curve, and let's uh, jump into animation constrain motion paths and let's look at our options so in our options um, the time slider is going to be this uh, 1 through 31 which is going to be obviously is going to be walking really really fast uh, that's probably too fast right we probably want 400 or 500 frames but uh, let's take a look and see how we can adjust it afterwards so I'm going to leave this alone I'm going to say that's fine um, and then I'm going to say follow the path and the front axis is Z, right? So the character I'm looking here is facing Z, that's correct. Uh, up is Y, so I'm looking here, that's correct. He's looking, uh, standing upright. And so now I'm just going to simply say attach. As soon as I do, you can see that the joints were snapped to the beginning of the path. And now technically if I press play, you should very quickly follow this path. Uh, 31 frames per second. So let's check this out. Yes, he's doing just that. So that's cool. If we drag this manually, we can see what he's doing. He's actually following the path correctly. You can see that he is turning where he needs to be and just doing it way, way too fast, right? So um, currently, if we want to um, expand this to be much longer, right? we need to go to our channel box and let's click on our motion path. And we can see that uh, on frame zero and 31, we have these two keyframes and that's the time slider of the actual animation. So let's um, go ahead and drag this to something. Let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do 400. I'm gonna do 400 frames. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold uh, shift and click on this button on the red line. And then I'm going to middle click on these middle little arrows. I know it's kind of hard to see them, but if you look really close, there's like the inside arrows and there's the outside arrows. So the outside will drag the, um, the, um, like the, the scale and then the middle ones will actually drag the position. So what I would need to do, I need to go to 400 and click on the middle ones to drag it all the way to 400. And now if I, uh, let's see, go back to zero or it's press play. 
we can see that he's walking uh, much, much slower. And most importantly, he stops walking after 31 frames, right? Because the animation is only being activated on his joints, as we looked before, only from frame um, 0 to 31. So essentially what we need to do now is we need to loop the animation that will continuously um, play the walk cycle. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and select our joints. And what, um, I need to make sure that when I click on this middle joint, it's so, it looks like it's selecting it. And I can press F to show you guys. But um, it's actually not selecting all the joints. It's just selecting the pelvis. And that's very tricky. Um, what I need to do is right click and do select hierarchy. So you could see the joints turn uh, white. And now every single one of them is actually selected. So this time, if we go to um, graph editor, if we go back to the graph editor and select our um, points, well, you, you don't actually have to select it. But if you go to curves and go to post infinity and do a cycle, you could see that there's actually a wave that's being repeated all the way through, right? Which means if we zoom out and go back to one and press play, you can see that now the character is actually going to be cycling through the whole time. Now there's another problem, which is he seems to be slowing down at the end and then slowing down the beginning and then kind of easing uh, into the the rest of the walk cycle. So it's not actually consistent or uh, linear. All right, so how do we fix that? Let's click on the locator and the motion path and we can see that our motion path again is from zero to 400, right? Let's uh, take a look at the graph editor. And this is point zero right here. And then this point here is 400. So if I select both of them and click on this button here called linear tangent, uh, watch what happens to this uh, line here. You can see that it's uh, actually turned into a straight line, which means he no longer has the ease in and ease out. Now he'll continuously, consistently walk uh, with the same speed. So let's check this out. And that is true. He's walking at the same speed uh, through the entire circle. Very nice. All right, so the next step would be definitely timing his uh, steps. It looks like he's almost sliding on ice, right? So he's not really uh, walking correctly. So I'm just going to switch this to, let's go to 600. Press enter, drag this a little bit longer, and then hold on the shift just like before, and just switch this to 600. And let's take a look and see if this is maybe a little bit better. Almost there. I'm going to be crazy and go to 800. Just trial and error. Hold on shift. Put this back. All right. And let's try this again. Much, much better. Um, how about 900? I'm really trying to uh, eliminate the sliding. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, you could probably even go to a thousand, but let's say we are happy with this. Let's go ahead and hide our joints. And we can also, uh, of course, hide our uh, curve hide everything and then only uncheck the uh, mesh or polygons, right? So I just have the guy and now if I press play, I can see him s seemingly walking around in a circle and 
looks like a fun uh, character. We can, of course, also hide the path so you can't see anything. Or uh, another thing we could do is maybe let's uh, create a camera. And we can do a free camera or we can aim a camera. Let's do an aim camera just for fun. I'm going to aim a camera. And for me to see the camera, I'm going to activate it. Let's maybe make this a little larger so we can actually see it. And let's check this out. So we have the aim right here and with the camera right here. So I'm going to take this aim and I'm going to drag, drag it inside the uh, locator. And I'm actually going to align, press F. I'm going to align the uh, locator of the camera or the aim inside the actual character. I'm going to position my camera a little better. And now what I would like to do is I would like to actually look at the character through the camera. So to do that, I'm going to go to panels and let's choose camera one. All right. And now if we press play, we have a camera following the character that's walking in the path. And the, because the camera camera's target is inside the uh, locator, it's actually following it in a really nice way. So this is uh, really, really cool. And we did all this as a fun exercise with the character from uh, Mixamo. So this is a cool way to set up uh, fun uh, animations. Maybe you could use this to create your own short and you need the background character or something like that. But I hope you uh, had as much fun as I have and I will uh, see you in our next video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like this video and um, have fun.